It's no secret to probably anybody watching this video that I play Thousand Year Door probably a little bit more than the average person. I've done several challenge videos on it, I've explored mods on it and everything, and I feel like now I have enough of a stake in this little niche on YouTube that people might want to hear my opinions about the game. And so even though there's already some tier list videos out there for badges in Thousand Year Door, I thought you guys might be interested in hearing what my opinions are. So this tier list is purely going to be based on my opinions for badges in the game and really nothing else. But I am going to rank them based on how useful they are, you know, how much I like them from a gameplay perspective, I guess. Kind of whatever. Yeah, I don't think I need to explain what a tier list is. We have S, A, B, C, D, F, and then I put a gimmick tier at the bottom. Because there's a few badges in the game that are just straight up gimmick badges, like the, the Luigi emblem and the Wario emblem. Like, those don't have any functional purposes. They are all cool, but I feel like they don't really fit in the standard ranking of badges in the game. So I'm just going to be going in order here. Power Jump is fine. It takes your normal normal jump attack and adds 2 damage to it and puts that out onto the enemies, but once you start to add any power increase badges, it doesn't scale very well. And in fact, if you had on 2 power pluses, hold on, let me do the math. So let's say you have ultra boots, so you would do 10 damage with a normal jump with 2 power pluses, or with a power jump you would also do 10 damage I think. So it's just like not useful after you start to scale. But early game it can be kind of okay, and like early game pit challenges it's not bad. I think that is a classic C tier, kind of middle of the road I guess. Multi bounce however. Multi-bounce is quite a bit better. So like on its own, multi-bounce isn't that special, but once you start to add attack increase badges and combine it with other things that we'll get to that are super useful, multi-bounce kind of goes hard. I'm thinking A for multi-bounce. Maybe I'm overranking it, but I feel like that's about where I would put it. And now shrink stomp. Shrinking your enemies is really not that useful. It lowers their attack by two, I believe. And also this attack gives you a chance to shrink them, not a guarantee. So like, I'm thinking D, personally. I like hardly ever use this one because for the cost of 2 FP, you could just do a ton more damage rather than shrink them and there's really no great strategic time to use it. Sleepy Stomp is definitely a bit better than that because sleep is actually a useful status that can disable enemies for turns at a time. And I think it has a decent success rate on a lot of enemies throughout the game and maybe even some bosses. So I feel like Sleepy Stomp, I gotta give... I don't want to be too generous to it. I feel like Sleepy Stomp's gotta still be like a C tier. I'm gonna try to organize these, by the way, in order from top of the tier to bottom of the tier, so it will actually be a ranking. I'm not gonna do the thing where people just throw them in whatever tier, because I always find that kind of annoying. I have very similar feelings on Soft Stomp to Shrink Stomp. I think I'm gonna go with D. Once again, it's just not that useful, and for the FP spent, you could just do some real damage rather than lowering their defense. And then Tornado Jump. Man, I have not used Tornado tornado jump in so many years i think it just kind of acts like quake hammer but with a jump maybe but it also doesn't have the effect of knocking anything over and i don't know i've never seen any reason to use it above multi-bounce because multi-bounce combos so well with so many other things so i'm gonna go bottom of c maybe top of d i don't know i've never found it very useful i'm gonna go top of d and now we have the golden child of thousand year door power bounce I mean, you all knew where Power Bounce was going to be based on any video that I've made on this game. Power Bounce is such a good badge for 3 FP, you can do insane damage, and on its own, it's fantastic, and at least A tier on its own, probably S tier on its own. But then you combine it with attack increases and like spike shield and stuff, and it just goes absolutely crazy. So no question, that is the top so far, and will probably stay on top, but maybe not. See, Power Smash is helped by the fact that it's given to you for free, and can be pretty useful early game. It's useful against things like Cleft, so you can one-shot them and maybe doing a little bit more damage on bosses. It's still not that good, but the fact that it's with you for the entire game kind of helps it out and maybe maybe that's kind of unfair to rank it based on that but i don't know i used it a lot when i was a kid especially and didn't know better strategies so piercing blow just does a normal hammer attack but it bypasses enemy defense honestly i've never found it that useful i know it can be pretty good in some of the early game pit challenges but in the prologue pit video that i did i didn't even use it so it's it's okay i just i feel once again i feel like there's other strategies that i'm biased towards that kind of outweigh it but i'll give it i'll give it right below power smash because power smash has that early game utility 
that Piercing Blow doesn't, really. But I guess Piercing Blow can be kind of good early game, but see, the thing is, Power Smash is given to you for free. Piercing Blow, you gotta go out of your way and buy. Alright, I'm not gonna lie, I've never really seen the use for Hammer Throw. I feel like Hammer Throw could be really good in, like, some sort of challenge that prevents you from using any of the jump options. But the thing is, you get Hammer Throw for the first time in Chapter 4, and, like, at that point, after Chapter 4, you can just get Spike Shield which does cost a little bit more to equip, but it doesn't cost FP to use and you can do more damage. So personally, I'm not really into hammer throw, but I'll put it above the rest of D tier just because it maybe could have use in a challenge that I do in the future. All right, head rattle. See, as a kid, I always thought the confusion status was super funny, so I liked using this move because it's just, like, there's nothing better than watching enemies attack each other rather than you, but realistically, it gives you only a percentage chance to confuse the enemy, and then the enemy has a percentage chance to not attack you and attack each other. So this one's definitely like, obviously it has a functional purpose, so I'm not putting it in the gimmick category. I don't know, I'm gonna put it bottom C because it's fun. And maybe that's a stupid way to rank this, but this is my list, damn it. Okay, so Ice Smash, and also we'll take a look at the Ice Smash badge. This is another one, like these status inflicting moves aren't that great, but Freeze is an okay status. But you could just bring an Ice Storm along with you, you know? Like those are pretty accessible in the game, so like, once again, I'm gonna put it here, I guess. Ice is a better status, so I'll give it that. I feel like Quake Hammer is low-key kind of fire. It does decent damage to everything, it can flip over like any any flippable enemies like clefts or koopas or anything and it's available pretty early on where it's actually like relevant so i feel like quake hammer is kind of a like especially as a kid but even now in some challenges i like to use quake hammer against the dark koopa troll in the glitz pit because you can flip him on his back and then he becomes totally useless and i feel like during some pit challenges that can kind of hold up too so i think a is pretty fair for that one and now fire drive Fire Drive is the champion, the golden child of, like, pit challenges, early game especially. Like, the prologue pit wouldn't be possible without Fire Drive, hardly. So, like, I gotta give it respect for that, but late game, it's just not that useful. It costs a lot of FP to use, and you just get better options. But I will give it top of B for its legacy use in those types of challenges okay now we have charge and charge p which i hold in similar esteem if anything charge p is slightly more useful because you could charge with a partner and then quick change swap them out and then keep their charge for later i'm pretty sure that's how that works i know that's how it works for status and i'm pretty sure it does that for charge so i'm gonna put charge p in a and regular charge probably in B. Charge can be a good strategy against uh, some bosses and especially in challenges, but charge P just kind of edges it out in my opinion. And then double dip and double dip P, another very similar combination here. I've never found double dip to be that useful. Like, oh, I, I'm trying to think of a time that I ever used it in this game. It's real. it's just not that good because your inventory is so limited. Without the strange sack, you can only hold 10 items. Like your limitation is your inventory much more than your ability to pump out items. So I don't think that these are that good. I think maybe bottom of C. And then for your partner's turn, I feel like, no, I, I guess it's better for the partner because Mario has access to special moves and he can get so much more healing out of those than using more items or more attack out of those. Like there's just not that much reason to use it. And then once again, the partner version slightly edges it out, I guess. Okay, next, HP+. Plus. I think HP+, plus has just got to get a solid A. Um, I don't think it deserves to be above any of these, but HP+, plus is just super useful for spamming badge power upgrades early game and having that flexibility to be like, oh, I should have spent that level on health. Well, guess what? You can just spend it on badge power and then use an HP+, plus if you regret your choice. Like, it's really useful. And I'm gonna go ahead and put FP+, plus next to it for the same reason. I mean, early game, you might as well just upgrade badge power and then deal with HP and FP later. And then HP+, plus P, I find is actually pretty good value for your money in challenge contexts. If you're just playing the game casually, I don't think you really need the extra five health on partner but when you're pushing the game to its limit and using like partners only and stuff like that suddenly it becomes a lot more valuable and I think for that reason I'm gonna put it here it's really expensive to equip but in those situations it's pretty useful power plus I'm gonna give I mean top of a I guess 
because like it does exactly as described on the box it increases mario's attack by one but it costs six badge power to equip and there's kind of some better options for that money and then power plus p i'll go same they're pretty equivalent but i feel like mario is slightly better and then all or nothing i think is s because it's just a cheaper power plus ultimately you don't miss your action commands once you get good at the game anyways so it's just better power plus i feel like that has to work that way and then my boy jump man is even better because once you start to add attack increases these attack increases apply to each one of mario's like two jumps on his normal attack and so very quickly the jump just becomes way way stronger and there's no real reason to have the hammer, especially when you add spike shield. In my infinite pit challenges, Jumpman was a godsend. In every normal run where I'm allowed to use Mario, I use Jumpman. Jumpman is just amazing. And then Hammerman is a lot less amazing. Because Mario's options just get so, so limited when you can't jump. Like, to hit anything flying, you gotta use Hammer Throw. And Hammer Throw is just not that good of an attack. So Hammerman is like way below. Like that's quite a distance between two very similar badges, but Jumpman is goaded and Hammerman just ain't it. Okay, now I don't know if this one is going to be a hot take or not. I think P up D down goes in S tier because it's a cheap attack increase. That defense drop can kind of hurt, but honestly the trade-off is so worth it because then you can like stack this with power plus and you've spent eight badge power to have two attack increases. And really like the defense drop just doesn't matter that much. It's a very worthwhile trade-off and then arguably p up d down p is even better than the regular p up d down because partner's defense just doesn't matter as much they have a lot of health they don't get targeted as much because they can just be kept in the back usually unless you're doing a specific challenge like my most recent one but still even in that challenge i did use this badge because partner's health just feels a lot more disposable than mario's and then i'm gonna give p down d up probably like a low C and I, I guess both of these would go with it. If anything, the Mario version is better because he has more ways to counteract that, but like the attack drop really, really hurts compared to the defense drop. Like those things are not really equivalent. That's why these are so good because trading attack for defense is so worth it and going the other way around really isn't. Okay, now I'm not gonna lie. This might also be kind of a hot take, but damage dodge? Mmm. I think damage dodge is a D and damage dodge P is an F. I never find damage dodge to be useful, like at all. There's a few scenarios where maybe you might want to defend instead of super guard, but once you have a lot of experience with the game like I do, you're just trying to super guard everything and you'll end up saving so much more damage even if you hit half the super guards and miss the other half versus defending everything. Like these are pretty okay early game but at that point you might as well just super guard because all the early game enemies are really easy to learn the timing for so i don't like the damage dodge badges they're useful in very rare scenarios but like i don't know i don't like them they're not very good okay so defend plus costs five badge power to equip gives mario one defense like there's no negative effect to it but there's kind of just better things to spend your defense on. I feel like offensive builds are just way more effective in this game in general, but I mean, it does what is advertised on the box. You know, you can't really complain about a defense increase. And then I think defend plus P is not as useful. I think I would rather have the extra partner health than the defense, but for Mario, it's a little bit different. So I'll go ahead and put that there. Okay, now double pain. I'm just going to put in the gimmick category. I did think about trying to rank this one somewhere on the scale because it does do something. It makes the game harder, but it is also just kind of like a hard mode badge. So I feel like it's not really fair to put it anywhere in the actual categories. So I'll just leave it in gimmick, but I do like this one because having difficulty options built into games is always cool. All right. And now power rush. So power rush for Mario is really only good if you're doing a danger Mario build, which to be fair, danger Mario does hard danger mario f**ks very hard but if you're not doing that you kind of don't want mario sitting around at 5 hp so i'm going to split the difference and put it top of b like it's it's good but only really in those scenarios it's okay as like a backup if you have like one extra badge power and you're like oh guess i'll just throw this on in case mario gets down to five health then he can do a little more damage but other than that it's either not useful or completely required for a certain strategy and now power rush p 
does not have that same problem. W with your partner, their health just doesn't matter. Like, who cares if they're at 5 health? Who cares if they go down? You can just swap them out to another one. Power Rush P is awesome, because getting in danger and getting 2 attack increase is so good with, like, Yoshi or Goombella's multibonk. Like, and it only costs 1 badge power to equip. That badge is kind of broken. Then last stand for Mario... I'm gonna say goes middle of A tier. Cause especially in challenges where Mario doesn't get his health upgraded a lot, this is really useful to have because he will more often than not survive attacks that he wouldn't otherwise. And I kind of just like to play the game without upgrading HP anyway. So this ends up coming in handy all the time for me. And then last stand P, once again, not nearly as useful. I'm gonna give it top of C. Cause it just doesn't matter as much for partners to have survivability in my opinion. And now Mega Rush for Mario is similar to Power Rush in that it isn't really a good idea to keep Mario at one health because if he dies, you just lose unless you have a life shroom. In fact, this one actually, I think, goes substantially lower. It's pretty hard to make good use of this consistently without either getting healed by leveling up or Mario dying. Mm, I'll give it top of C right under last hand P. I think that's fair. And then Mega Rush P... Mega Rush P is f***ing amazing. Mega Rush P probably is second so far. Like, getting a 5 extra attack is so strong, it's so useful for early game pit challenges, it's useful for late game bosses, it's useful for early game bosses. Like, Mega Rush P is so broken that the challenge wiki for this game literally has categories that exclude you from using this specific badge. It's that good. It's a little more situational than Power Bounce, so I feel like it doesn't edge out Power Bounce, just because it's such a good attack that works good at full health, when you're boosted, when you're at low health, or anything, but its utility is still insane. Close Call is really good. I think it goes right next to Last Stand, but above, because it gives you Lucky Day when you're in danger, which is like a 25% chance for attacks to miss. And like stacking that with Last Stand is really cheap and just makes Mario such a tank when he has below 5 health. Once again though, I don't think it's a good idea to build strategies around this, but rather to use it to increase his survivability. Because trying to keep Mario in danger for long without using a dedicated Danger Mario build where you have 50 power rushes, like, isn't a very good idea. And then Close Call P, uh, honestly, I think I'm just going to do the same thing that I did with Last Stand, but down here, it's just not as useful for the partner to survive. It just isn't. Okay, now Pretty Lucky... I think Pretty Lucky is like a solid A tier, because it's pretty cheap to equip. Like, you might find times where you're building out your badge loadout and you have two extra badge power and you're like, oh, what do I spend it on? And Pretty Lucky is a really good option, because it gives you a 10% chance for attacks to miss. And sometimes just getting that freebie miss can be so nice, and it doesn't cost that much, so it's kind of worth having on if you have the space in your loadout. And then, once again, kind of following a similar theme with the close calls and the last stands, I think that it's slightly less useful on your partner, but maybe above these, I think I'll put it bottom of B tier. Okay, and then Lucky Day, I'm in... Oh, man, Lucky Day is kind of a hard one, because the evasion it gives you is so good, but it's pretty expensive to equip. I usually only actually use it at the end of the game for the last 10 floors of the pit and bone tail because beyond that there's really not much left for you to need it for but it is it is good I mean it gives you very solid evasion like something that you could actually kind of rely on to reduce how much damage you take I'll put it right above regular pretty lucky I think they're still similar in my mind man lucky start is not very good it's a fun badge, and I remember when I first played this game as a kid, I didn't know about Atomic Boo. And then I saw Atomic Boo online and got this badge and was super excited about it and thought it was the coolest thing. But realistically, it, like, kind of sucks. It's above Damage Dodge P in my mind, because I don't think I've ever used Damage Dodge P or felt a need to. But it doesn't, like, do anything useful. None of the effects it gives you are that clutch. Okay, Happy Heart, once again, is one that I kind of liked as a kid, but then you grow up and realize that it kind of sucks because for two badge power every like two or three turns it'll give you one health versus for two badge power you could have pretty lucky equipped and dodge like a seven damage attack 10 percent of the time and like i feel like i'd rather just go for that i'd rather roll luck than roll you know like trace amounts of health so i think happy heart goes like bottom of d and then happy heart p i kind of hold those in similar esteem and then Happy Flower is a little bit better because FP in that amount is better than HP, but it's still not great. Okay, now Flower Saver. Flower Saver is pretty solid. It's a little expensive, like four badge power is kind of steep for it, but it's still pretty good. I think top of B. I feel like 
ultimately it's better to spend that badge power on like an FP plus and that would kind of do you the same in terms of giving you extra FP but it's not bad. Okay, I think that Flower Saver P, I think it's just slightly better than regular Flower Saver. I think that is where I wanna put that. And now Pity Flower in a surprise to absolutely nobody. Bottom of F tier, it fucking sucks. It is the punching bag of the Thousand Year Door community because the effect that this badge gives you is that when you take damage, you might receive one FP back. It's not even a guarantee. Even if it was a guarantee, which it is in the Infinite Pit mod, it still sucks and there's no reason to use it. So it being nerfed over its already really horrible potential is kind of hilarious and it deserves bottom of F. HP Drain is really, really niche in terms of strategies. It drops Mario's attack by one, but can give him extra health back. But I don't know, I've just never found it useful even for a defensive build. Like you can use this combined with like power bounce and gain some health back each turn. But it just plays so slowly to do that, when just as easily you could build attack and get through battles way faster and easier. And I don't know, I just don't like HP Drain that much. Uh, maybe F tier is too harsh, but bottom of D for sure. Now HP plus P I think can get top of F. HP plus P sucks. Like, once again, partner health? Less important than Mario's health. There's really no reason to ever use this. I feel like FP Drain also doesn't work very well. Probably even less than HP Drain, because like, at that point you're not even healing Mario and his strategy isn't sustainable. And then if you combine these two, he gains health and FP back each attack, up to 5 if you use Power Bounce. But then he's not doing like any damage hardly, and he does need to do damage in order to actually gain the effects of this. So I don't know. I've always just found it to be kind of a gimmicky strategy. I'm thinking Heart Finder goes like top of C. It can be pretty useful in some scenarios, like some pit challenges and stuff. But then you get to Flower Finder, which is way better for things like that. It's not amazing, but I think it earns bottom of A. It can be pretty good for like early in the pit when you're using a lot of FP, you can get a little bit back. Item Hog has like a set table of items that it's able to drop and none of them are that good, but it's kind of fun at least. So I feel like it gets top of D. Like I'd rather use it than Hammer Man. Okay, now Ice Power is a really, really hard one to rank because there's only three fire enemies total in the game, and this does make fighting them way easier, but beyond that, it's not useful. So, like, it's not really an attack so much as it is, like, progression item. I don't know. Like, this- Oh, where do I put this one? I mean, the fact that for one, it gives you extra attack against the fire enemies is good, but it's not useful beyond that. Like, it is good in the specific scenario where you're supposed to use it and useless in everything else. So I guess, like, I don't know, I guess top of D. Like, yeah, it is useful on fire enemies. There's just not that many fire enemies in the game. All right, and then Spike Shield. Spike Shield gets bottom of S. Not because, like, on its own, it's not that important. Like, on it, on its own, Spike Shield only really helps against spiky parabuzzies and maybe spike tops, kind of. But then combined with every other strategy in the game, like, it lets you use power bounce on spiky enemies, it makes Jumpman into the Goliath that it is. Like, it has to be an S tier because of its importance in other strategies, but on its own, it's only okay. It also has a hard as f badge icon, like, look at that little Mario guy on that, like, spiky background. Like... That goes kind of hard. Feel free to screenshot that. Okay, now Zap Tap. So Zap Tap is only, in my opinion, useful against enemies that latch onto you, so fuzzies and bats. And other than that, it's kind of just a bad return postage. But the fact that it makes Swampires at the end of the pit completely free to beat alone gives it a pass into higher tiers. Like, I'm gonna give it top of B because those enemies are so f***ing annoying that having a strategy that completely deletes them is worthwhile okay now honestly i'm not super familiar with other people's tier lists or opinions on this so i have no idea if this is a hot take or not but return postage kind of blows like i'm gonna put return postage there it costs seven to equip and yes it does half damage back to direct attackers so it's a permanent spite pouch effect but it's just far too expensive to equip like for that badge power you could have a lucky day equipped, you know? I don't know, I've never actually wanted to use it. It's a trophy more than it is a useful badge. Also, I'm realizing now that my tier list is getting kind of cropped out, there we go. <laughs> Sorry, things are increasing and I wasn't prepared for the scale of an operation here. Okay, so, 
feeling fine and feeling fine pee. I think that I probably tend to underuse these because I like to go for the glass cannon big damage builds. But these are really useful when you need to survive longer against a boss. I think if anything, they're not that good if you're just playing the game under normal conditions. But in challenge scenarios, I definitely underuse them and probably should use them more. In fact, there's definitely a comment on one of my recent challenges that pointed out that I should have used it. And I was like, wait, yeah, I should have. There's no reason to not use it. So... I'm gonna give both of them B. I feel like these go next to each other, but Mario's slightly more valuable. Man, refund is like almost a gimmick. I, I like getting some extra money from using items in battle isn't that helpful because money's never really been an issue in this game. Mm, I'm gonna put it in gimmick. I think gimmick is fair for that one. It doesn't actually have any effect on battle. It's just kind of like a funny little dopamine boost to get coins from using an item, but it really, it doesn't give you that much money or anything. Okay, now money, money. Once again, I feel like I should probably put in gimmick. Uh, I don't know. Like I'm trying to keep this out of things that don't affect battle. Like that's kind of what the gimmick tier is for, but like money, money was insanely useful in the randomizer speed run thing that I was doing, but that's like such a weird specific context that it kind of doesn't feel like it applies to a ranking of badges in the game. So I'm going to stick with gimmick for that one. Super appeal and super appeal P are honestly not bad, but not great. I hold them in very similar esteem. If anything, a partner appealing is less of a waste of a turn than Mario appealing, so the partner one goes above, I guess? Hold on. Hold on. Everything's crumbling. Oh, it like, kind of doesn't fit without that black bar over there. I guess we can have the gray there. Um, this is kind of ugly. This tier list is getting so big. I don't know how to graphic design a tier list. <laughs> uh, I haven't watched enough tier list videos to know how they deal with this. This is kind of funky. <laughs> Maybe this one is a hot take, but the peekaboo badge, I'm gonna put bottom of S tier. I really like the peekaboo badge. I know how much health every single enemy in the game has off the top of my head. Like you could name in any enemy and I could tell you how much it has. Like a Dark Lack 2, 13, you know, a Spunia, 12, Dark Coup Patrol, 25. Like I know all these random numbers. They're in the crevices and folds of my brain. But having to keep track of them is so annoying. And especially on bosses, having to waste a turn to tattle them is annoying, and then having to keep track of their health is annoying. I love using peekaboo in every playthrough of the game that I do. If you're trying to max out your file and tattle everything anyways, then it doesn't matter. Like, there's no reason to use peekaboo. But for my purposes and the way I play the game, peekaboo is a godsend. I get it every time. Okay, and speaking of godsends, quick change is insanely expensive to equip, but quick change is so, so good. Being able to swap your partners around at will is just fantastic. Like, absolutely fantastic. I feel like it has to go somewhere in the top three. It might be the top one, but I don't know. It's so expensive. I think Quick Change is number two. I think Quick, cha quick Change dethrones Mega Rush P because Mega Rush P is made even better by Quick Change, and Quick Change is already good on its own without any other badges. So I feel like Quick Change has to go above it. And now, Timing Tutor gimmick simplifier and unsimplifier i feel like they kind of kind of suck i'll give them i'll give them that because i think they do affect your super guard time at least this one affects your super guard timings but i'm not sure if the regular one does so maybe this is uneducated but i don't know both these badges kind of suck but at least this one has a reward this one's reward is lame because the action commands are easy anyway okay chill out is like another kind of ah uh, man chill out is like both a gimmick but also kind of useful so uh I, i'll rank chill out because these like these last ones on the you know what here to avoid being anticlimactic let's put all of these in gimmick the luigi and wario ones are gimmick i know they're awesome i love them i love equipping both of them and being waluigi but they are gimmick badges i'll put slow go down there because that is a gimmick and it also goes on the bottom because it's the worst gimmick in fact you know what for gimmick for gimmick will go like this uh th this one has an actual use so gimmick will be this that is the official definitive order for gimmick and then chill out i'm gonna put like kind of middle there i guess top c it can be useful but once you know the game it's pretty easy to avoid first strikes from enemies anyway okay now first attack 
is useful if you're running around late game trying to complete some stuff and it doesn't cost very much to equip but at the same time you could also just use bump attack for that same purpose because once again these are both only useful late game when you're over leveled enough to kill things anyway and by that point you probably have enough badge power that you could just take off a power plus and put this on and just kill things instantly because you don't need it anyway so i feel like bump attack can go bottom a because it's really useful for that late game scenario and first attack is like not very useful like it's easy to obtain but by the time you would have bump attack at the bottom of the pit is the only time either of them are useful anyways so it's kind of outclassed by the time it's useful in my opinion okay so there is the list um i'm trying to think if there's any corrections i want to make to it maybe charge goes higher i think i think charge goes higher than that tbh so i think this list definitely shows you what kind of thousand year door player i am because all the offensive like absolute maxed out glass cannon stuff is at the top and then a lot of more defensive slower status based strategies are at the bottom but like i don't know i've played this game for a lot of years and i feel like just maxing out your attack is always the way to go it feels like that is just unstoppable no matter what you do but i don't know maybe i'm just stupid maybe i am stubborn who knows uh i could be stupid and stubborn but also smart at the same time so of course as with any sort of ranking video i would love to hear your guys's opinions in the comments below because i'm sure lots of you have different play styles and different preferences that you have with playing the game or maybe there's some different combos that you know about that i just didn't mention or have never used before so yeah let's go ahead and start a good old discussion in the comments because i know it feels kind of redundant to say but i feel like genuine discussions in youtube comments are kind of a dying breed these days so let's try to make a real one anyways speaking of real ones that's all of you guys uh make sure you subscribe and like the video if you enjoyed it because that helps me bring you more thousand your door content and whatever else content because it tells youtube that i'm doing a good job which means that it shows the videos to more people all that beautiful stuff so thank you guys and i will see you next time